we're back. We're doing it again. Did you see where we just drove by? Bass Pro. I think this was like the most voted for place for us to do one of these EDC challenges. Uh, so that's, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go into Bass Pro. There's a little pro tip about Bass Pro. They price match and you must, you must price match at Bass Pro because I know that like in retrospect, I paid way too much for my very first Spyderco Tenacious at Bass Pro. I think it's like a $50 knife. On, on good days, you can find them at Walmart for even less than that, maybe $45, $30. I've seen them on sale. I paid $80 for mine at Bass Pro. So I'm still salty towards Bass Pro. That was like three years ago. I'm still salty towards them, but I now know that you can, you can price match. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, before we go in, we'll just talk about what I'm carrying. So this is what we're looking for. We're gonna replace these items in Bass Pro. We have my knife, that's a Ferrum Forge Stinger, a Rovivon, what is that, A23? No, A23, that's the other one, A3 Pro. Got a little big idea design pin. My own little multi-tool. A wallet, my keys. I got some green going on here today too, if you couldn't tell. Keys, uh, what else? Oh, my watch. I don't have high hopes for the watch, but we're gonna try to get all this stuff inside Bass Pro, which is just over there. All right, let's see what we can put together. Also, there's Joseph in the back. Say hi, Joseph. Hello there. Get your greasy food off my seat. <laughs> Listen here. Flashlight, knife, watch, keys, pin, multi-tool wallet, and that's everything. We know where the knives are, we know where the flashlights are. Let's look for watches. Oh, look at that. Bass Pro branded camouflage watch that has a fake bezel. It's not even a real bezel. You can get our Yee Yee wallets. Jesus, that is huge. Look at this. So, Bass Pro was slightly different than I expected. It was a little more difficult. Uh, one, because there were a ton of options in some ways, and in others, there was nothing at all, like pens, no pen. We couldn't find a pencil or pen or anything anywhere in the store. Maybe we overlooked it. There were some online, uh, but nothing that we could find in store. So, no writing utensil, sorry not sorry. But this is what we were able to find, and I think for the most part, I made out pretty good. There are some things that I regret getting. Let's start with the keys because it's just simple. I'm gonna get right through this. This is a black diamond carabiner. They had night tie stuff. I didn't wanna just get another one of the same ones I've had a million times. And yeah, when I did the REI video, I got one of these too. But personally, I'm gonna get this over a night tie carabiner because this has many more uses, even if I don't use this for my keys. One of these is, I think it's a better buy for five or six bucks. These are actual carabiners that you could use to hang a, a, a hammock or something with. You can put gear on these. The night tie stuff, they're fine. They're good for keys, but personally, I'd rather have like a real carabiner nine times out of 10. And I think this was six bucks. Speaking of night ties, uh, wallet options were pretty scant. They had some really nasty looking leather wallets. They had some Yee Yee wallets, which I wanted nothing to do with. Then they had this and of course, another surf shorts wallet from Chums. Uh, I picked one of these up just for personal 
reasons, but the wallet I chose for this video is just something I wanted, I wanted to try something a little different. So we got the financial tool from Night Eyes. And I, uh, some of you complain about the way I say Night Eyes. Apparently it's supposed to be Night Eyes. I say Night Eyes because reasons. Ugh, dude, that's some hard cardboard. Holy shit. Bro. What do they have this put together with? Let's just tear it. Can I tear it? Let's just do it that way. That is thick. Crazy that these little ones are better than the big ones. Ugh. They really do not want you to steal this. Holy crap. It looks like just a, kind of like what the Lever Gear wallet is, which I've talked about in the past. Something, is it this? Dude, this smells like Play-Doh. Or cra no, it smells like crayons. Why does that smell like crayons? Ew. It smells like crayons. I don't know. I don't know. This might be. This is crayons. Look at so many crayons. Check the drawers. Check the drawers. Look at the drawers over here. The oven is so red. Oh, you got it. Oh, you got it. 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 What? What? Metal? It smells like crayons, doesn't it? Yeah, it smells like crayons. This, this is getting weird. Yeah. Uh, anyway, you take your cards and slide them in. It's got a little retention clip here to hold your cards in place. And then you can have your cash and the money clip on top. It's actually very slim. Um, I don't care at all about any of these multi-tools because they're not gonna be super handy. Maybe a ruler from time to time would be nice to have. And then you've got a little cap lifter right here which is also fine, but I mean, everything is a bottle opener. You could literally open a bottle with one of the corners of this thing. You don't need a cutout. That's not bad. These are $10 and uh, I, I don't think I could complain too much about this. I like really, really thin, slim, minimal wallets. I know a lot of you don't like metal wallets, but I'm not opposed to them. And I think for 10 bucks, this is actually a pretty good buy. This item I have probably the least amount of, uh, hope for no hope i hope it's better than i think it is is probably a better way to put that i don't expect too much from it that's for sure or the zip tie that holds it in place that was a very weak zip tie uh this is a dive watch it is quartz it was 20 dollars, and it very much looks like a casio duro or any anything of that style you can definitely tell it's got a very very cheap bracelet on it wouldn't expect much more from a $20 watch uh, or anything like a $100 watch or a $200 watch. You can't expect too much of the bracelet on those. So the first thing I would do if this were mine, get rid of the bracelet. But uh, let's see if we push this in, if it runs, it does work. It's got a little date window, very, very, very lightweight. I don't know if I can get in here to see some of this stuff. One atmosphere, so 33 feet of water resistance, not, Amazing, uh, I wouldn't swim with this thing on. I think it's fine for 20 bucks. Definitely looks nicer than $20, but just a standard quartz watch. I personally think if you were looking at buying this, unless you really, really love Bass Pro and your absolute maximum budget is $20, I say spend 20 to 25 more dollars and get a Casio Duro. It's gonna be one of the best bang for buck watches you can get, period. This looks like a Casio Duro, but I can tell you just by holding it, I can tell you from afar that this isn't as nice. Um, it does have a, a unidirectional bezel, but actually it's really, really bad. Um, lots of play in it too. Yeah, so wouldn't expect anything super out of this watch. Um, it can't even like actually line up. The bezel doesn't line up. Oh, it stopped, it's locked. Bezel stuck. Oh. Maybe not. Okay. Jeez. Oh, this bracelet's bad. This bracelet, I mean, obviously it's not fitted, but listen, that's bad. Imagine it were adjusted. It doesn't look bad on the wrist. It's a little bulky, uh, but it just doesn't look very high quality. But that is a $20 dive watch from Bass Pro. Yeah, that's Moving on. However, uh, there was another option for a watch at Bass Pro. 
this one, the Instinct Solar. This is the one that I got at REI. I've worn it some since then. I actually ended up going back and getting the Phoenix 6 Pro. I took that one back yesterday because it had some issues, but you can also pick this up. They have two Garmin watches available at the Bash Pro I was at at least, which is this one, which is the Garmin Instinct Solar. And then there's also the Phoenix 5, not the Phoenix 6, which is the current series. So you do have some options for actually decent watches at Bass Pro. If I had not already bought one of these, this would be the watch that I would get for this video, but I wasn't gonna buy another $500 watch that I already had just for the video. So this is an option as well. Uh, if you do go to Bass Pro and buy any of this stuff, 100% price check. And that gets me to the next thing actually. This right here is a decent flashlight, Streamlight Pro Tech. Um, I see these submitted from time to time. It's actually a pretty good flashlight, surprisingly. So just a single AAA flashlight. It does have a little pouch and a lanyard. If you want those things, I am not gonna bother getting those out of the packaging. Very much like the Streamlight MicroStream, just a slightly different configuration. So this one is a little different in that it is a little more tactical. I think it's actually a little bit bigger. In fact, Joseph, can you look in that top drawer and see if there is a brown flashlight that looks like this? Nope top the flashlight drawer, bottom cabinet, top drawer. Ugh, I forgot I had this. This is the Streamlight MicroStream. This is the USB recharging version, approximately the same size. This one's got a little bit bigger uh, diameter towards the end, but one is more EDC friendly. One's more, a little more tactical. Um, the tactical term is way, way overused, but you do have a crenulated bezel on this one, whereas this one's smooth. Some minor differences, and then there's differences in how they operate. This one has a high mode and a low mode. This one has high mode, strobe, and a low mode. So you have an additional mode here, but approximately the same flashlight. And then this is a an Olight i3T EOS, just for reference. What I wanted to get to though, or what I wanted to mention, however, is the price matching. So this is a $40 flashlight at Bass Pro. This in the USB recharging version, I'm not even sure how much it is. Let's look at it on Amazon. I think the USB recharging one, which theoretically would be more expensive is cheaper, $30. $30 for this one on Amazon in USB recharging. And I happen to know that this one online in different places, the ProTac AAA is 27 bucks, not 40. I think this is a very good flashlight for EDC. I would not be upset having to carry this light at all. I think it suits my needs. It's not my favorite AAA flashlight because I, the way that it's set up, the high strobe low is very different from how I use a flashlight. I would prefer it to be low, high, no strobe, uh, but that was also my main complaint with the original MicroStream. Regardless, I think this is a really good pickup and they have some decent flashlight options at Bass Pro. Next up, we have the SOG PowerPoint. I've actually opened this one up and taken it home and messed with it a bunch because I, I actually was probably most excited about this over anything else that I got from Bass Pro. I think this is a really cool option for an EDC multi-tool because it's kind of that mid-sized range. Uh, you got a lot of tools on here, bolt gripper, protractor, I don't know how that works. Wire crimper, straight edge blade, millimeter ruler, hook cutter file, jewelry driver, an all can opener, serrated blade, Phillips, bottle opener, inch ruler, scissors, soft wire cutter, needle nose pliers, and magnetic bit holder, which is kind of hidden in the end, which is really, really cool feature. Uh, open length is five inches, close is 3.2, weight is 4.2 ounces. The only thing about this that I'm not super jazzed on is the blade seal, but it's it's like at least a secondary, if not a third blade in your carry. 5CR15 MOV, so that is a very soft steel compared to some other multi-tools. This was $50, and I just wanted to show you what I mean by midsize. So I'd say a small multi-tool would be something like the Gerber Dime or the Leatherman Squirt PS4 or the Leatherman Micro. Very, very small plier-based or scissor-based multi-tools, and then you've got Full size with the Leatherman Free P4, and then the Power Pint is somewhere in between. So it's not quite a full size, and it's not as small as these, which some people think are too small to be useful. I disagree, but this is a surprisingly great size. And I think there's some Leathermans in this size range, like the Juice series, but the Power Pint is one that wasn't super on my radar. I've heard of it before, but I've not ever seen one in person, and I didn't get that scale. When you look at a picture of this thing online, it looks bigger. This is 
quite small, but it's good enough sized for you to get a really good grip with if you're using the pliers and all of the tools are accessible from the outside. So it's got one of my favorite things that the Leatherman Free P4 series or Free P series has. All the tools are accessible from the outside and then you have a really good size pliers. So I think this is a really cool multi-tool, a great size and probably the best pickup from Bass Pro. The last thing I picked up was the knife and there are a lot of options for knives at Bass Pro. They've got two full aisles with Kershaw, CRKT, Buck, Gerber, Sog. They've got a bunch of the, the mid-tier knives, I would say. Uh, and then they've got a cabinet with locked knives inside. They've got some higher end case knives. They have bench made, um, some higher end buck knives. They used to carry zero tolerance. My Bass Pro no longer does. I don't know if that's a company wide thing. Um, so the highest end knives you're gonna find at Bass Pro are bench made knives. And the selection was pretty scant. They were out of a lot of things. Um, I was trying to buy the bench made Arcane out of stock couldn't get it i did not want to buy another bug out because i've already got three of them and i think they're fine knives but you guys are all too familiar with the bug out they had bench made griptilians but most of them were in d2 so they looked really cool because they had coyote handles but they're d2 blades for 150 bucks and i couldn't pull myself to buy a d2 blade bench made for 150 bucks i don't care if it's exclusive couldn't do it and then they had this and I'm gonna be straight with you, not exactly a good choice. Uh, not because I think it's a bad knife, but I really, once I got it back here and played with it a little bit, kind of wish I'd gone a different route. Looking back, uh, if I pick something based on what they had in stock, uh, maybe the Osborne, they had a special edition Osborne and they had a pretty cool looking bug out with a bright orange blade and gray handle. I love the gray and orange combination, but I don't know, I couldn't have, forced myself to buy another bug out, but they did have this one in stock, which is the 535-5, the carbon fiber with that aluminum uh, backspacer and the S90V blade. So they did have these and they had them in stock. So I'd say this is probably the best knife that they had there, but I wanted to go a different route because I wanted something a little different. So I went with this and can't say that I'm like, amazed or super pleased with it, but I'm also not upset. What I went with is the Tengu Flipper from Jared Oser. Uh, I think the design's fine, but something I totally overlooked before I bought it was that it doesn't have a clip. So it actually comes in a slip, and this is what I'm most upset with. Look at the quality of this slip. This is bad. This is a $200 knife that comes with a leather slip that looks like I, I am not good at leather work, and I'm pretty sure I could make something that looks better than this. This is pretty bad. Uh, I like Benchmade. I carry their knives. I've liked Benchmade for a long time. This, not a good look. I would be very upset if, you know, I didn't do what I do and I saved up to buy a knife like this and I like the knife and it comes with this. This is pretty dang bad. That aside, I think the knife itself is pretty decent. You get a 20 CV blade and a Tonto with a stonewashed finish, flat grind. It is a pretty thick uh, stock as well. And unlike what you normally see with Benchmade knives, this one is a liner lock. So typically you're seeing a lot of access lock knives from Benchmade. This one is a flipper with a liner lock and the action's really good, really snappy. Detent is perfect. The blade centering is almost perfect. Action is really good, but the reason I'm a little upset with it is just, I don't know, missing the clip means that I've got to carry it in this slip or just loose in the pocket. Fine, I could probably get past that. But the biggest thing about this knife that I just, I'm not a huge fan of is the blade geometry paired with it being a flipper and the fact that the handle is wider than the blade is. So if you wanted to do a like a flat cut with this thing, you can't. Like if you're holding it, you can cut like this. So it puts all that pressure right on that tanto, that that edge where the two edges come together. I don't know what the terminology there is. Uh, that's as close as I could get to this being flat. If my hands kind of back like this, even then, that's the only point that touches. So unless you're like cutting on something raised, you can't get this blade flat, and you have to use, you know, the point here. Uh, I guess that's okay, but just the way that it's put together is just a little odd for me, having this 
handle that's wider than the blade, and then you also have a flipper tab that sticks out a good bit. Uh, I think for everyday cutting tasks, opening things and whatnot, maybe even a little bit of food prep, this is okay, but definitely wouldn't be one of my favorite knives. Not even close, but I, I think it looks nice. It's got kind of like a, a modern traditional look to it. So not quite like a Pena, but uh, I would say in the same realm, almost gentlemanly uh, grandpa knife-esque. But once again, you look at these and the blade comes right up flush with the handle on both of these. And if the blade were scaled up like 10%, this would actually look really good. It's a very clean looking knife. I love all the straight lines. I love the detail of the, the backspacer here. I, I like the way it looks. It just something about it. And I think it's that ratio just looks a little bit off. So all in all, I think I did the best with what was available. And I do think this is a pretty cool knife, but it has some things that I would personally change. And I think if, if I were to do this again, I would just succumb and get another bug out. So there you go. This is the best carry that I could put together in a pinch from Bass Pro Shops. We've got this $20 watch. You know what? Forget that. Let's do this. Instinct Solar, Benchmade Tengu Flipper. We've got the SOG PowerPoint, Streamlight ProTac a Nighthize money clip wallet and a black diamond carabiner. So what would you do differently or what, what was your favorite thing from this video? I, I think personally it has to go to the PowerPoint. I really think this is a really cool multi-tool and uh, surprised me. And uh, maybe I'll carry the, the Tengu flipper and it'll, you know, change. Maybe I'll like it a little more. The more I look at it, the more I like it, but that blade ratio, just something about it just irks me a little bit. There you go. That is the Bass Pro video. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. If you found it helpful and enjoyed it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below. Subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future. Hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. If you want any of the stuff you saw in this video, it will be linked down below. If you click through and purchase anything using those links, it will help support the show. You can also go to patreon.com forward slash bestmedc or carrycommission.com where you can buy gear and merch directly from me, just like this shirt and many others. You can also follow us around the web in most places at bestmedc. But with that said, and until next time, carry on.